fam, like Serene's here with another reaction. So today we're going to continue with our Golden Girl series, this time with season five, episode 23, titled The Menja Cavallo Curse Makes a Lousy Wedding Present. As always, if you're looking for the full-length reaction to this episode or any of my other content, you can find that on Patreon and the link will be in the description below. And if you cannot support us on Patreon, that's completely fine. You can support us directly here on YouTube by liking this video, commenting, and subscribing. So without further ado, let's get into our episode. Yay! Okay. Morning, Dorothy. I didn't want to hear it from Brian Gumble, and I don't want to hear it from you. Oh, damn. <laughs> Problem? I still don't have a date for Jenny's wedding. My own goddaughter, and I'm going to show up alone. Oh. Humiliating. No, I don't rub it in. I meant for me. How is it humiliating for you? Guy I know, and they all came up with the same lame excuse. Which is? I don't want to go. Did you have a date yet? No, she I don't doesn't. Go. Dorothy, I'll get you a date. You can borrow one of my extras. Why do you care if I have a date? Family honor, especially at this wedding. What's so special about this wedding? Dorothy's goddaughter is marrying the grandson of Giuseppe Manja Cavallo. Manja Cavallo. Oh, shit. <laughs> So, let her tell the story. When I was 14 in Sicily, my father arranged a marriage with a neighbor's son. My dowry was two chickens, a ladle, and a goat to be named later. <laughs> the day of my wedding, as I stood at the altar, the boy I was to marry was on a cattle boat headed for America. That night, on a tear-stained pillow, I put a curse on him. Curse? Nothing fancy, I remember I said. Giuseppe Manja Cavallo. From Manja this day Cavallo. forward, may you and all your future generations never know true love. May you be sterile and may all your offspring be sterile. Damn. And may your socks always slip down inside your shoes. Oh, that sucks. That's this is horrible. the same Giuseppe Manja Cavallo, who is the grandfather of the groom. Now, you see why I want us to look good at this wedding. Look, Ma, I don't know how to break this to you. Gently, I'm old. <laughs> Giuseppe Mangiacavallo has had a fabulous life. He's in his 80s, is a multi-millionaire, and enjoys perfect health. Well... Oh, well it's a very slow-acting curse. <laughs> so it would appear. Oh, Dorothy, come on, borrow one of my men. One of my many, 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 many... <laughs> all right, all right. For Ma's sake. Now, let's see, you're going with Howard. Dr. Howard. <laughs> How about Doug? Oh, Dorothy, not Doug. I couldn't possibly. He's on my A-list. So it has to be somebody from the B-list? I mean, come on, Dorothy. He's a judge. Yeah, this is why I hate doing this. You always do this, Blanche. You always keep all the good guys for yourself, and you give us the leftovers. You know what your trouble is? Of course not. <laughs> You're only generous when it doesn't mean anything. But you won't give if it's going to hurt. Hey, Dorothy, you could always call Claude Hughes. Oh, come on, Ma. Claude Hughes is the dullest, ugliest man I know. Well, damn. So what's the problem? He didn't want to go. <laughs> Hi, Rose. It's not fair. I don't deserve these kinds of problems. Oh, what honey, kind of problem? I, I live to help. I'm a great friend, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> Miles can't take me to the wedding. He's going to be out of town at a teaching seminar. Now I can't go. Well, that shouldn't keep you from going. Oh, I have my reasons. It's, it's a long story. Gotta run. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what's this all about? Well, it started 40 years ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> Go on with your story, darling. I care deeply. No, you don't. Well, after the wedding, Charlie and I had the most exciting, passionate night of our lives. After that, whenever we'd go to a wedding, we'd end up going home and putting on the cast album of Song of Norway <laughs> and going crazy on each other. What are you saying, Rose? Weddings get you hot? Yes. <laughs> but, oh, I'll never forget that first wedding after he died. So now you see why I can't go if Miles is going to be out of town. I might end up almost going to bed with the caterer again. <laughs> Rose, I want to help, but first you have to tell me what the problem is. <laughs> She doesn't oh, want to cheat honey, on her boyfriend. We wouldn't let you do something you'd regret. That's what I was going to say, I swear. Oh. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Dorothy, let me get you somebody hot off my A-list. Somebody tall, good-looking, goes with everything. It goes with everything. <laughs> Doug? How about an ex-race car driver? Speaks five languages, has three car dealerships. All Just right, give her Doug. a Doug. But listen, don't you forget, you be careful. This man is on loan from the Blanche Devereaux collection. Uh-uh. Where's Doug? Oh, he's checking our coats. Blanche, I want to thank you. You know, he's really a very nice guy. Well, that's fine for you, but I don't know why I even came. This is the last time I ever date a doctor. Imagine dumping me for an emergency appendectomy. Well, I mean... I just hate it when these doctors use the Hippocratic Oath as an excuse for everything. Well, the person was gonna die. Oh, his appendix? Sophia! <laughs> After all this time, I was hoping you'd come. I wouldn't have missed it. You still got those beautiful eyes that light up a room. I had cataracts. <laughs> Very becoming. Okay, okay, enough chit-chat. I fix it so all this will come crashing down on your head. There are no curses, Sophia. That's a thousand miles and a hundred years ago. <laughs> Sophia put a curse on me. <laughs> It's starting to happen. Dorothy looks very happy, doesn't she, Sophia? Yes, you she really does. You really through, Blanche. I feel all warm inside. <laughs> this must be what they call the joy of giving. Oh, she unhappy right now. Feels a lot like cramp. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Stop looking at him. He's talking about the actual cocktail wieners. Nice. Do you like jazz? No, ma'am. I've always felt there was something about a man with a tray. <laughs> Is it warm in here? <laughs> Blanche, I want to thank you. I am really having a good time. You know, Dorothy, there is a thin line between having a good time and becoming an obvious wanton slut. <laughs> Says who? Says you? <laughs> I know, my toes been on that line. <laughs> multiple, multiple times. Sophia, I was hoping we could dance. Don't Ooh. try to kiss the up, it's too late. Calm down, there's no curse. Nothing's gonna happen. How could you do that to me? What are you making such a thing? Leave me alone, I hate you! It's the curse! Care to dance? Love to. <laughs> Can you believe that? Was that worth waiting 70 years for or what? That's not I what she's talking it. about. The Cavallo curse is finally kicking in. Vengeance is mine. Excuse me. Yes? I couldn't help noticing. How do you make your eyes twirl around like that? <laughs> it's not hard. I just try to think of two things at once. <laughs> Was very attractive. Have you always been able to do it? No. Only at weddings. <laughs> Excuse me. Look at the way Blanche is nuzzling up to him. Look, I'm not going to take this lying down. I don't think you're going to be invited. <laughs> Sophia. What are you doing? Just trying to make myself even more attractive. Pointless, isn't it? I mean, what are you doing with Doug? He is here with me. Well, I know that. I'm the one who set it up in the first place, Dorothy. By the way, he said some very nice things about you. What did he say? I said you were going to do this. I knew you were going to do this, and now you have done it. If you'd let me get you somebody on my B list, I never would have been so attracted to him. No tissue. Listen, Blanche, we have to talk. Not now, Dorothy. Suit yourself. Dorothy, will you let me out of here? No way, Blanche. Sophia. You still alive? Ooh. Sophia, please. Joey's alone in the bridal suite. The bride is who knows where. And the band doesn't even know Valari. You've got to do something about the curse, Sophia. Oh, so now you believe. <laughs> I guess you can't get away from your roots. Why should I do this for you? I was a kid. I was scared that if I got married and, and had a family, I, I never would get out of that village. Leaving you was the toughest thing that I ever did. Yeah. I was quite a dish back then. You still are. Oh. Any girl in the village. You're just.
just making a mountain out of a molehill. Five years of molehills. They add up. <laughs> well, I didn't know Doug meant this much to you. I'm not talking about Doug. This is about you. She asked me for another chance. I gave it to her. I trusted her. Biggest mistake I ever made. You're right, Aunt Dorothy. You can't trust people. Joey just told me about some of the things that went on at his bachelor party. Bachelor parties can be fun. <laughs> you know what you said about not trusting people made all the sense in the world. Aww. I should go tell Joey the same thing. Well, honey, it may not be the same thing. Joey didn't lie to you. He told you the truth. I guess. Yeah. Sounds to me like you two just had a, a little misunderstanding. Not five years of deliberate betrayal of trust. Dorothy, you do that one more time. I'm going to write on this wall for a good time called Dorothy's Oh, Florida. no. <laughs> well, I mean, it would get her. ladies' room. Right. Ooh. <laughs> Honey, I think you should go and talk to Joey. The best thing to do in any relationship is talk. That's right. I have nothing to say to you. <laughs> Sophia, I can't believe that saying this will write 70 years of being wrong. Just say it. It'll make me feel better. <clears throat> Uh, everyone, may I have your attention, please? This is Sophia Petrillo, the girl who stood me up at the altar 70 years ago. Oh. <laughs> and? And I uh, just asked her to be my wife again, and again she said no. I'm gay. <laughs> Let's go take care of the kids. No. Oh. Ma, have you seen Rose? She left with Doug. Boy, were well, her eyes twirly. <laughs> How could she do this to me? Or you? Who did she do this to, Dorothy? What's happening? <laughs> Blanche, don't you see? We were supposed to look after her. We knew that she gets hot at weddings. She was counting on us. No. Don't look after me when I get hot. That's because I also have a day job. <laughs> I might as well give them the chance we never got. Now, this could take a while, and it won't be pretty. Did you ever see The Exorcist? No. Good movie. <laughs> they, well, here goes. They've already made up. Oh, sorry, kids. Don't stop on my account. <laughs> Curse is over. <laughs> Dorothy, I wish you'd talk to me. I really do, because what I need is a good talking to. <laughs> I don't care what you say, just just so long as you care enough to say it. You stink. Aww. God bless you, Dorothy. I don't want to talk about it, Blanche. I'm too worried about Rose. You know, Blanche, I owe you an apology. How can I be high and mighty about my friendship with you when I can't do Rose the simple favor of keeping her out of trouble? What I have to do is remember you for the person you are and accept you. Oh, she's looking at somebody. She didn't even pay attention. She didn't even pay attention. Where's Rose? You know, I don't know what happened. We got in the car. We were going to my place. Well, she wanted to go to my place. And then she didn't want to go to my place. And the next thing I know, we were headed for the airport. Oh, that is low. Not only do you take advantage of her, but you take her to the one area in town that has the cheapest motel rates. <laughs> Blanche, I took her to the airport so she could catch a plane to be with this guy, Miles. Either of you ladies care to dance? Doug, you left here with another woman. You were going to take her to your place. Now you come back here and ask us if, if we still want to dance? How can you do that? It's still early. <laughs> Remember that restaurant in Sicily we used to go to on Sundays? I'd save up all week for one plate of pasta that we'd share. With checkered tablecloths. Candle in the Chianti bottle, bad paintings of the Colosseum. You remember. No, but the odds were in my favor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fam. So we just finished watching season five, episode 23, titled The Manja Cavallo Curse Makes a Lousy Wedding Present. Uh, this was a nice episode. Um, not my favorite, um, but it was still very entertaining. So our girls are going to, or went to a wedding uh, who, it's the granddaughter 
of Sophia's former fiance who left her at the altar and says then she's put a curse on him. So she just wants to go so that she could see her curse in action. And um, at the same time, Dorothy's looking for a date, asks Blanche for uh, recommendations. Blanche gives her one of her A-list people. But as we know, Blanche is a little bit of a seductress. <laughs> so because her own date does not show up uh, due to appendicitis, she starts to kind of put her claws back into Doug, which is uh, Dorothy's date, and create some friction between the two. And I can understand Dorothy's position because Blanche is a little bit selfish when it comes to what she likes or things that are hers. She rarely gives to people unless it services her some in some way. So whether because she's going to be seen as altruistic or she's going to be seen as a good friend, she does it because she gets something in return. So this was kind of an example of that, that she gave Doug to Dorothy because she wanted to be seen as a good friend. But then when the test came because her, her own date did not show up, she almost backtracks. <laughs> she was like, no, he's still one of my guys. So I can still, you know, dance with him and be a lovey dovey with him, even though it kind of hurt Dorothy's feelings. So I'm happy that ultimately they got to say sorry to one another even though when it comes to Blanche, she wasn't really paying attention to what Dorothy was saying. But I think part of her understood that um, sometimes you have to prioritize friendship over your own urges. And uh, yeah, and then we got to see Rose as well and find out that Rose has a thing for weddings and weddings make her hot. So uh, luckily it made her hot in the right way that she went and took a plane to go see Miles that way she can be with her beau um, while she's dealing with all of those urges. <laughs> um, and then ultimately the curse did seem to work. And then at the end, um, Sophia, I think it's more Dorothy, but Sophia's lineage kind of fixed the curse at the end. So great episode. It was a really funny episode. Um, when it comes to my MVP, um, I don't know who to give it to actually this episode. I think it's going to go to this one. I think it might go to our little Sophia. Um, just because of one, she put the curse on, um, on what's his name? Um, Manja Cavallo. So she put, uh, is that Manja? Manja Cavallo. Yeah. So she put a curse on him and his family and then the curse came to fruition and then she ended up fixing it. But she also gets the MVP for what she had him do in order for her to um, reverse the curse, which was one, say that she left him at the altar, not the other way around. Two, that he proposed again and she declined his proposal. And three, that he was gay. <laughs> so all of, like just that scene alone makes her MVP because again, she was like running everything. She was running shit like nobody's business. So uh, Sophia gets my MVP this episode. So I hope you guys agree. And if you don't, let me know who your MVP pick would have been for this episode. And I hope you guys enjoy this reaction. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah. Bye for now.